All right, just like digital coloring, it's all about how we set up our layers. So for digital painting, I have a blank white canvas that is locked on the bottom. I have a reference image tucked into the corner that's locked. I have my speed sketch reference that I can actually lock now because I don't want to accidentally paint on top of that eventually. Whoops. Eventually it will go away completely. So I'm going to lock that. And now I can bring in additional color reference to go underneath my speed sketch. And the reason we covered compositing so early in the class is so that you know how to change these images, right? You know how to rasterize them. You know how to erase from them, to shrink them. Because the only point of these is to help you, help you choose colors. Um, I have a mix here of color photographs, black and white photographs, and even illustrations, right, that are gonna inspire this piece. Now, you could obviously just choose endless amounts of reference, and I don't wanna do that. I'm gonna keep them all off kind of to the right. But three or four, I think, is a good number. And this is one of her famous uh, album covers with all the red light. Okay, so now I could also decide to flip these. You know, because that kind of helps with this lighting. I can also, of course, rasterize them and delete away stuff that I don't think is so helpful. And I guess I might as well flip this one too. Okay, so once you've set up your color reference, and I love this fabric. So I can steal a lot of nice colors from there. We can steal colors directly from that color reference. And that will give us probably more dynamic and more interesting color choices than if we're always picking them from the color palette. So now with all these reference images, I'm just going to put them all in their own folder because I want to keep my layers fairly simple as much as possible. And I'm going to lock that folder so I don't accidentally paint on any of those layers. So now everything's locked. Now for my, for my local color, my flat local color, because that's the first step, right? If you remember the, the painting of the kiwi that I showed you in the handout, that's in Canvas for you. You can work with the sketch first, but then the next step, just like in digital coloring, is to fill in kind of the default local color. Now the local color of this apple is yellow and red. It's got two colors that it is, despite the lighting condition. And after that, we can do lights and darks. Now, I have inspiration here with very different local colors. Her skin tone is different depending on the lighting. And I like kind of the rainbow effect of this. So you don't need to be uh, particularly slavishly representational here. But what I'm gonna do is just use my brush. I have all my settings. And brush settings are here if you ever wanna change them. I have some texture, I have some shape dynamics. And I've made it fairly big, and I'm going to do it at 100%. And what I do is I just hold down Option to steal a local color. And I can kind of put that down. And I want kind of a mix of local colors. Now realize that as I'm stealing from reference, this local color of her skin is really defined by the temperature of the lighting. And so it already has a lot of shadows in it. 
So if I want to bring some of the color in, I might steal some of the highlights and some of these other colors. And I'm going to start to shape her face just from these skin tones. And it starts to give me a palette. I'm not doing details. I'm just trying to, sh to give it some shape. And I'm doing it behind my speed painting. So we have a lot of oranges, a lot of siennas. Start to get some yellows in there, some ochres. And basically, you don't want your colors just to be really boring. But you do want them to be 100% opaque. And this is that phase that I call kill whitey, right? You want to get rid of the white space that you're not using. You don't want any white to be on the image except for the ones that you've put there. Now, if that becomes a problem for you, sometimes it's easier to start with a dark canvas, maybe even a black canvas or a middle gray canvas. Right. So you can do that. So on top of your blank canvas, or you can duplicate your blank canvas and then you can fill it. And usually I'll use middle gray to help me with this kill whitey phase. Right. Because white's important to a painting, but you don't want to let it just overtake everything. I'm also going to take my speed um, sketch reference lines and just take them down to only about 30% and then lock them again. So that now I can see more of my painting and every other layer I'm locking except for the one I'm painting on. And the only tool I'm using is my brush. And I'm just having fun. Try not to prejudge it and get worried about things not looking right all the time. Now the danger, notice how I'm not zooming in at all. The danger is to kind of fall in love with your image and then get like sucked into the details, like the eyes. My thing's lagging, that's why I can't like go super fast. <laughs> no, I was, I was asking like when everybody draw or whatever, you go like this, or I go like that or whatever, it just takes a while to catch up. That's why I don't like Because if I speed draw, it doesn't like follow exactly. Yeah, so something you'll notice with Photoshop, and the reason we're using Photoshop instead of kind of a freeware version, though there are lots lots of options for this, for, for just digital painting, is that you need a really fast processor to match your brush movements, especially as we build in those customizations to the brush. I want a little blue in her in her hair. So if you notice, and it probably will happen to everyone eventually with speed painting or with, with digital painting, if you notice that your, your brush is lagging behind, you need to save your work and restart Photoshop. But it's been doing this like the past couple of years. So. Yeah, so you wanna you wanna save your work and restart Photoshop and maybe even restart your computer because you need to clear the, the cache of memory on there. Yeah, it's totally you don't have enough dead data to win. Bless you. And we can we can check your performance settings to make sure that yeah the computer is allowing Photoshop to pull enough. Okay, so I'm still on this kill whitey phase, but in this case, get rid of all these grays. It's really tempting to like stay around the eyes and just, but I'm not letting myself zoom in yet. I'm not letting myself go to a lower opacity brush. I'm just painting with solid color, right? Because this is the, the base layer. And I have to decide, do I want to draw her with some sort of shirt on? Do I want to try to match that those sleeves? I kind of like this collar, so maybe I'll, I'll hint at that. And then I like the jewelry, this kind of glints. 
And notice all of my color I'm stealing from my reference. I'm not going over here and modifying it, not yet. And the reference doesn't need to be big in order to steal from the individual pixels on there. Now, if you're working from, from a black and white reference, it's always good to colorize it a little bit. Make it a sepia, make it a sienna type. This one is already very sienna because those, those colors matter. The yellows and the browns I'm using, those are all gonna matter. All right, let's see. So I still have some areas I need to fill in behind. And if you want to modify, you certainly can. But now I'm doing a lot of squinting. This is just kind of basic painting. Squinting and trying to match values, the big value shapes where I see them. And trying to build up some diversity of color. And this looks like solid black, but it's actually a really, really deep blue. And that's taken just right from these photos. So try not to just use solid black. Try to always have it be a mixture of some sort of color. And that's what you'll learn in a painting class as well. Now it's very important early on to establish your value range, to have your lightest light and your darkest dark. And at that point I can turn off my speed sketch and then just start looking at it here. And then determine what's still needed. Okay, I'm using a fairly large brush. I kind of framing her in. So now all of that is flat color. Let's see, there's a, still a lot of white, especially around her eyes. I wanna get rid of that and replace it with my own choices. But still use this kind of clunky brush. Try not to zoom in and get all too detailed. Frame her nose a little bit. She has her eyebrows. And if faces are something you like to draw, then all of this will just feel familiar to you. It just takes practice. Animals are definitely more forgiving than human faces why it's an option. I'm kind of liking this Nina Simone portrait. She's so little off for like 40 million. You can always put it up for sale. <laughs> All right, and then before I move on to the next stage, which is the duotone color on top, I need to make choices about this space. You don't wanna just leave anything, even the boring stuff. You wanna put something there. You need to, you know, get rid of the white so that your painting remains no matter what's there. Okay, so the gray underneath now I can use. So basically I go to my flat local color. I use my magic wand with contiguous turned on and I select outside of it. And then I say select inverse and I go to my gray layer and I just say duplicate after I unlock it. 